We're going to do some in-media Reese over here. Tell things a little bit out of order in order to get the best effect. So yesterday, the Vancouver Canucks played the Seattle Kraken at home. It was a very bad game on paper, if you take a look at the results. 4 nothing. Seattle was the game, and this was a game that a lot of my friends personally went to. It was a game that I was offered to go to as well. And it was one of those where I was like, you know... Once that game wrapped up, I thought to myself, all my friends, they actually spend some time. They either drove out to downtown, parked beside the arena, walked over, grabbed a hot dog at Costco, and made their way, or they made the trek over onto the Sky Train. They went onto the Expo Line, got off at Stadium Chinatown, got the Costco hot dog, and went from there. And it was an experience, you know, it was a day for them to go out there and have a time at the game. But if I did that myself, I honestly would have been disappointed go through the entire journey just to see a game where the Vancouver Canucks can't even score a goal, mostly because Philip Grubauer was there, he was doing his thing, he was fantastic. It's not like the Canucks were not trying. But this was one of those games, right? And one of the best parts about this game, despite the fact that the Canucks got shut out at home, was Pod Cole himself. And I say that because that's his Instagram handle. Vasily Pod Cole's him out there and showed off what made him special. This video goes over the entire profile of Pod Colson. How, two years ago, he was just a Vancouver Canucks draft pick, 10th overall, who was taken in Vancouver all the way to today. Let's talk about Pod Colson and the profile over here, starting out with what happened in his draft season. So, Vasily Pod Colson was taken by the Canucks, as we said, 10th overall, 2019 NHL entry draft. Back in 2019, he was one of the most polarizing guys in the draft, mostly because of the draft season that he had. Now, 2019 draft means his draft season is 2018-19. If you take a look at that year for Pod Colson, you could see that he had spent so much time bouncing around a whole bunch of hockey teams, never really settling down in one spot. The 2018-19 campaign started off with the Hlinka Gretzky tournament, which put Vasily Pod Colson on the map, where as the captain for the Russian squad, he put up 11 points in five games played. I remember seeing all the hype back here in August of 2018, seeing how good this Podzolskin guy was. And I say it intentionally like that because some people were not really pronouncing his name right in the time. Podkolzin in the Hlinka Gretzky tournament was an absolute force amongst boys. He went out there and dominated the tournament with eight goals in the five games played too. A lot of the goals he scored were picking up the puck in his own zone, charging to the goal, getting by one or two guys by any means possible, and crashing the net with the puck going in as well. A few of the other goals he scored were absolute laser beam snipes. On the power play, he'd suit up on that right face-off circle, grip it, rip it, and absolutely bury it. He was the captain on this team for a reason because he had that leadership quality to his game, his heart and soul kind of mentality did not back down from the way he played, and the goal scoring and offensive production he displayed in general was good enough to make everybody say, wow, look at this guy, he's an early front runner to be a top 5 pick at the 2019 draft, even though it's only August of 2018 as we're watching this tournament over here. As the year went on, though, you never really saw Pod Colson produce the same amount of points in pretty much any other area of his draft year. He played for SKA 1946 St. Petersburg in the MHL, that's their junior team, was under a point per game over there. He played for SKA Neva St. Petersburg in the VHL, the AHL of Russia, where he had 5 points in 14 games. He also played 3 games for SKA St. Petersburg in the KHL, where he went pointless in 3 contests. He also played for the regular World Junior Team, where he had 3 points in 7 games played, and the U18 World Junior Team, where he captained Team Russia, getting 4 points in 7 games there. Pod Colson was kind of all over the map in this year, and a lot of people were questioning where in the world was the production for this guy. He was so good at the Hlinka Gretzky, but now he can barely produce in any of the other hockey leagues he had. And a lot of that could be chalked up to chemistry. Oh, he's going out there, not really developing, he's not really playing on a hockey team, he is playing on hockey teams, meaning that he's not really able to get comfortable in the way that he's playing, right? Not to mention the fact that he had himself a contract signed with SKA St. Petersburg that wouldn't allow him to go over to the NHL for a minimum of two years. He said himself that he wanted to honor the contract. He signed it, which means that it's his responsibility to fulfill it. He had the option of opting out and saying, okay, sorry, SKA, but I want to go to the NHL, so I'm going to ditch you guys after signing this contract. He said no. I want to play for you guys, it's why I signed, I'll go to the NHL after. 
which means that NHL teams that were drafting Pod Colson wouldn't see him until 2021. Now, it's kind of a testament to the leadership and character of this guy. The maturity to be able to say, okay, I could go to the NHL and start making millions of dollars, but I already signed here, so I'm already committed here, so I'm going to play here. But this fact, along with his production issues and all the other stuff that we talked about over here, this is ultimately why Pod Colson dropped. Earlier on in the Helenka Gretzky, a lot of people thought he could have been a top five guy. Some scouting outlets had him as high as number three earlier on in the year. But once the 2018-19 season came to a close, the highest ranking that he had was fourth overall by future considerations. ISS had him at six. NHL Central Scouting had him as the second best European skater. And he slipped all the way to Vancouver at 10. Now, he was a surprise pick at 10. A lot of people thought that the Canucks would have gone with an NTGP guy because Boldy and Caulfield were both available on the board. But I think I speak for the majority of the fan base when I say that most everybody forgot that this guy was even available. Like, you saw all the names go on in 2019, Hughes, Kako, Doc, Byram, Broberg, Sider, Cousins, Zegris, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, the Canucks have a chance at getting Caulfield because everybody had their eyes on Caulfield. No, they go with the Russian instead. Pod Colson is here in Vancouver, and you can see the fans in the stands. They're kind of like hailing him as he's walking into the locker room over there. Good stuff to see. The problem with Pod Colson, though, ever since he got drafted, was almost the exact same problem as he had in his draft year, where in the next few seasons of play, you could see that he is all over the place. He's never really settling down in one hockey team long term. He's going from the Russian national team to the MHL to the VHL to the KHL. He played in the playoffs in two of those leagues, and his production was somewhat getting better. But the biggest problem was that we knew the KHL wasn't allowing him to develop. At the end of the day, the KHL is not a developmental league. The KHL is a pro hockey league with pro hockey teams with owners and managers that want to win. And for for Pod Colson, there was always this aura around him that we knew that he was going to come over to the NHL after his two years in Russia were done. And it's not just North American fans that knew that, Russian fans knew that too. And so anytime Pod Colson would go out there and make a mistake, whenever he would fumble a puck, it would usually be the end of his continued stint of playing hockey in that time frame. There were so many games in Russia where Pod Colson only had five minutes a night, six minutes a night, playing on the fourth line, not getting any development time, getting sent up and down between the MHL, the VHL, and the KHL, not playing any games, because they knew that ultimately this guy wouldn't really have any benefit for them if they tried to develop him and make him a better player. Why? Because he would go to the Canucks in two years. There's no point. We had ourselves a lot of situations like that in Russia for young prospects that are drafted by NHL teams. That's an entirely separate issue, but it's one that Pod Colson had to deal with, and it's partly why his production was so bad. And a lot of Canucks fans knew this, which is why nobody was really sure as to how Pod Colson really was. We didn't really know how good he actually was if you gave him the keys to the car and say, okay, it's yours. Don't matter if you do a mistake. Just do what you want to do. And so we all pointed our binoculars overseas to Russia, where we tried to identify what Pod Colson could be without really getting ourselves a proper template for the skills he does possess when he's completely unleashed. As a result, with Boldy doing his thing, with Caulfield, with Newhook, and all the other guys in the draft taken after Pod Colson producing points and doing all this stuff, there was still some debate as to whether or not Pod Colson was the guy that was the best pick available, but we all knew at the end of the day that Pod Colson would be that heart and soul kind of winger. He does everything for your team that he can. He's a do-or-die winger. You're never going to go out there and get work ethic concerns out of Pod Colson. He never ignores his assignment. He's not afraid to get physical. He's not afraid to block shots. He's not afraid to do anything he can to make sure that his team wins a hockey game. He was projected towards being this coach's fan favorite kind of guy, along with the tool set that he had that he displayed at that Hlinka Gretzky tournament all those years ago. Until the playoffs in the KHL, where for SKA St. Petersburg, one of the most expensive teams in the KHL, Pod Colson put up 11 points in 16 games played. We had finally started to see him actually get more ice time and start to be given, as I said, the keys to the car. He started to produce, and a lot of Canucks fans were like, okay, this is the guy. This is the guy that we drafted right here. Not that guy that's being sheltered and being passive and not wanting to make a mistake like he had been the previous two years. 
this is the guy. And now he's in Vancouver, his KHL contract expired, and we still have ourselves a few more moments of unraveling to go through. Here's a tweet that I thought was very good right here from Dave Hall of Dauber Prospects. Pod Colson is slowly learning to show his creativity at the NHL level. I don't blame him for being a bit tentative so far. If he made a small mistake last year, he was glued to the bench for days. Tonight, we are getting a quick glimpse of where his creativity can go. And the reason we say that is because yesterday, Vasily Podkolzin, he went out there and he started to showcase some of the skills that we saw two, three years ago. Barreling through guys, dumping the puck in and getting his own dump-ins with no problems. Just maneuvering, weaving through everybody, dangling through guys after faking a shot and driving his way to the front of the net trying to score goals. The killer instinct is starting to bring itself back out with Podkolzin. And I'm all here for it, baby. Talk to me in the comments. What do you think about Vasily Podkolzin yesterday? And where do you see him going as the year proceeds? What are your expectations for Podkolzin? Does he get 10 goals, 20 goals, 20 points, 50 points? Let me know in the comments. What are your thoughts? I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 9 And bye.